Miracy. Basically, what he did each morning, along with his co-host, was talk about the community with the community. I always thought it would be fun and, and inspiring to have my own show like that. Hi, I'm Teacher Tom, and welcome to Teacher Tom's Podcast. For this episode, it's just you and me diving deeper into a topic that I'm excited to explore with you. Today's topic is cooperative preschool and community. The tagline for this podcast is taking play seriously. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Play is not the dessert for young children. It's the main course. Play is the human instinct to educate itself, made manifest. Play is the key to healthy intellectual, physical, social, and emotional growth in the early years. Sadly, today, childhood play is in crisis, both in America and around the world. Our young children are spending more and more time in those institutions we call school. And tragically, schools, even preschools, are becoming increasingly academic, forcing young children to do things that are not only developmentally inappropriate, but outright harmful to that development. Even in the evenings and on weekends, children find themselves enrolled in adult-directed activities or in front of screens or even doing homework when past generations were outdoors playing. Play is at least part of the solution to so many of the things that ail us, both individually and as a society. Not only does play supercharge learning, but it sets us all free to pursue our passions and become the human we were meant to be. After all, that's what the world needs more people who have come alive. This podcast goal is to support early childhood educators, parents of young children, grandparents, caregivers, aunts, uncles, and any other adult who loves children in providing young children an authentic, playful childhood. Now, that said, I imagine that most of the people listening to this episode already know something about me. For instance, maybe you know that I write a blog about play-based early childhood education called Teacher Tom's Blog. I've been writing almost daily since 2009. That's 15 years. I honestly don't know anyone else who has been a blogger longer than I have, and certainly no one who has written more individual posts. I know that people still read blogs. I still get well over 100,000 readers a month. Another thing you might know about me is that I've written two books, Teacher Tom's first book and Teacher Tom's second book. You might know that I offer online courses for early childhood educators and parents. You might know that I travel all over the world to teach, coach, and inspire early childhood educators about play-based pedagogy. So why a podcast? What other people tell me is that people today prefer to listen or watch, that they don't read, and that I just need to keep up with the times. You know, fair enough, I suppose. I still have a full third of my life ahead of me. I'm not ready to go the way of the ancient scribes who chiseled on, you know, stone tablets. So, Teacher Tom is trying to get with the times. Other people tell me that a podcast will help me reach a new audience, a younger audience, a hipper audience. And that's a good thing, I think. After all, those are the people raising young children. And there will never be a generation of young children, parents, or early childhood educators that won't benefit from taking play more seriously. And on a real serious note, there is a genuine concern that childhood play is becoming increasingly rare which is not just a tragedy for young children, but for humankind. In all honesty, those aren't the reasons that I'm in your ear right now. When I was younger, I used to love drive-time radio. Specifically, there was a morning show on KLOO AM radio in Corvallis, Oregon, where I went to high school. It starred the station owner, Bob Holglum. The show was called Toast and Coffee. And basically, what he did each morning, along with his co-host, was talk about the community with the community. I always thought it would be fun and, and inspiring to have my own show like that. And, you know, in a way, that's a little bit like the career I ended up having as a preschool teacher. I mean, you come together each day with your community, you talk and you listen, you share, dance, sing, bicker, agree. Sometimes you have special guests or go on a field trip, but generally you follow a familiar schedule with familiar people. Then you go home knowing that you'll come together again at the same time with the same people and do it all over again. This is, for me, the heart of what community is all about. Community has always stood at the center of my work with young children. Another thing that some of you 
might know about me is that I spent the better part of 20 years as a teacher. For most of the time, the only teacher at the Woodland Park Cooperative Preschool in Seattle, Washington. Now, a cooperative preschool is a school that is owned and operated by the parents who enroll their children. And I'm not talking about symbolic ownership, but actual legal ownership. Typically, we would enroll 65 or so families each year, and they would become 65 equal owners of the school with me, the teacher, being the only paid employee. Everything else that goes into running the school was done by the parents. Parents took on all the administrative work. They handled enrollment, gardening, repairs and maintenance, purchasing, food prep, field trip planning, photography, custodial tasks, and anything else that needed to be done. And when decisions needed to be made, it required the parent community to come together to discuss, debate, and when consensus was impossible, to vote. And as the only paid employee, I had, in a very real sense, 65 bosses. Think about that. They hired me, they evaluated me, and they could, if they so desired, fire me. Now, I imagine there are some of you educators out there thinking, oh, no way, <laughs> I could never have 65 bosses. And I get it. But for me, it never felt that way. You see, the part of being a cooperative that I came to value above all else was that each family was required to provide me with an adult one day a week to serve in the classroom as an assistant teacher. That's right. One day a week, the parent or caregiver came to school with their child to serve under my supervision. I often think that the world would be a better place if more institutions or enterprises worked as cooperatives. I mean, the owners are also the customers and they're also the employees. As customers, the motivation was to get your child a high quality preschool education at the lowest possible price. As employees, you wanted a satisfactory workplace. And as owners, you wanted a business that operated on sound financial principles. But it was more than that. Every preschool becomes a community. But in a very real sense, a cooperative becomes a community of families, not unlike a tribe or a village or a neighborhood. This is the kind of community humans have evolved to live in. For 99% of our existence on this planet, we were hunter-gatherers living in communities of 20 to 200 closely related individuals. It's only been relatively recently that we've begun to aggregate ourselves into larger populations. Many of us have adapted, of course, but for many of us, and especially for young children, smaller communities like the one we created in our cooperative are like those still found in some neighborhoods or churches or other affinity groups are our most natural learning and living environments. That's my aspiration for this podcast, to become a kind of community for early childhood educators, parents, grandparents, and other caretakers of young children. And my hope is for it to be a community that takes play seriously. Some of you may already know that I'm a married man. My wife and I have been together since 1984, married since 1986. That's nearly 40 years. Our child, Josephine, was born in 1996. When she was in kindergarten, I was talking with the head of her school about community. And he said something that stuck with me. The sign of a healthy community is how quickly newcomers are brought into its center. Now, we've all been part of, or at least tried to be part of, communities that seem to resist our efforts to take part. Maybe there were too many rules, written or unwritten. Maybe the community was too clicky. Maybe there were divisions and divides that made it impossible to navigate. These are unhealthy communities. I'm hoping that the community that forms around this podcast can be the kind that brings newcomers immediately into its center. And now that doesn't mean that we all have to agree with one another. I mean, I have a few hard lines like, you know, no violence, no name calling, no threats. But when it comes to young children and our adult roles, community, and what it means to be educated, I hope there will be room for everyone. Another thing you might know about me is that my wife and I have produced global online early childhood education summits called, get ready for it, Teacher Tom's Play Summit. A couple of years ago, I was interviewing an Ojibwe educator named Hopi Martin. He asked me to imagine a burning campfire around which people, including you, were sitting. Someone wanted to know more about that campfire. They could ask you to describe the fire. You might talk about the color, the intensity, the way the wood is stacked, 
what kind of wood you think it is, the smoke, the heat, but that's just the fire from your perspective. If this person really wants to understand that fire, they would have to ask the person sitting next to you to describe it, then the next person, then the next, all the way around the circle until, finally, they had learned about the fire from all perspectives. But even then, Hopi said, they wouldn't have a full picture of that fire until they asked the birds and the trees themselves, until they asked the worms underground. I love this metaphor because it makes it clear that there is always something more to learn because there is always another perspective to consider. It's allowed me to see that when someone disagrees with me, they aren't my rival, but rather my teacher. Every time I can see the world from another perspective, my own perspective, my own ideas and knowledge get bigger. In our preschool, this phenomenon came up every year around Easter when the children would debate the details of the Easter bunny. Some of them thought the bunny laid eggs. Some thought chickens laid eggs and the bunny just painted them. Some thought the Easter bunny was you know, a normal sized bunny while others thought it must be extra large. Some thought there were multiple Easter bunnies. Some thought the Easter bunny was a girl. And of course, <laughs> There was always at least one child who insisted, your parents are lying to you. And these debates could get intense, as debates about faith often do. Sometimes there was even yelling to the point that it sounded a lot like our adult political debates. And like our adult debates, at the end of the day, I don't think anyone had changed their mind. But that's not the point. But what has changed is that now each child can look around and think, I believe what I believe, but that friend over there believes something else. As individuals, none of us may have changed, but since we have both shared and listened to all the perspectives, we have a bigger and more accurate picture of who we are as a community. And then the children do what we adults, I think, have forgotten how to do. Once the debate is over, they all go outside and get back to playing with each other within the context of this bigger idea of who we are. I want this podcast to be like that campfire or those Easter bunny debates, which was why most of the episodes will be about me stepping back and sharing the microphone with someone else. People with interesting perspectives. People who I hope will help expand your perspective. Now, I'll still do some solo episodes like this one, but if there are people you want to hear from or people you think I'll benefit from speaking with or topics you're interested in hearing about, shoot me an email and let me know. That email is teachertomhobson at teachertomsworld.com. So let's grow our ideas together. That's it for this episode of Teacher Tom's Podcast. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your support. Thanks for playing with me. I'm Tom Hobson, and you've listened to Teacher Tom's Podcast taking play seriously. You can find out more about me at teachertomsworld.com. That's T-E-A-C-H-E-R-T-O-M-S-W-O-R-L-D.com. Teacher Tom's podcast is a part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Just Between Coaches. Stay tuned for more fun episodes by following us on the Miracy FM YouTube channel or your preferred podcast player. If you found today's insights valuable, take a moment to leave us a starred review. It will help us reach more people like you. Again, thanks for playing with me, and I'll catch you in the next episode.